Hi everyone, welcome to Mostly Math. Today we will be answering somewhat of a trick question. Let's say if I ask you to solve the following equation, sine x equals 2. Need to solve that for x. Well, on the surface, it would seem like the question is ill posed since if we look at the sine function, it's always bounded between the values of minus 1 and 1. So how can there be a function, or a value of the sine function rather, such that when you plug it in, you get 2? How is this even possible? Well, like we discovered last video, it's certainly possible to define the trigonometric and the inverse trigonometric functions for complex values and we would know a priori that the value of x has to be complex since it's not satisfied by any real number. The question is, what is this complex number? For this, we have to do a derivation similar to what we did last time for the arctangent. Let's begin. So, we're going to answer a somewhat more challenging question or a generalized version of this. If we had sine x is equal to 2, this is the same thing as saying that x is equal to sine inverse of 2. So basically we need to look at the inverse function of z for some complex number z. And we're going to use the, the, uh, the complex form of the sine and cosine function like we did last time. That's just some background to help you understand what we're going to do next. So you might ask why I didn't motivate the previous video in the same way if I had tan of x is equal to 2, for example, then solve for x. Well, this actually has a real valued solution um, since for the tangent function, if you're on the unit circle, you can have an arbitrarily large output by considering a short triangle. If we have like a regular triangle like this, like this is pi over 4 for example, you can have a, a small small uh, value. But if you consider steeper and steeper, more narrower triangles, it's actually going to approach infinity when you take the ratio of the two sides. And we have 1 over some small number being infinity. So it's not possible to motivate the discussion of the arctangent function like this. Just wanted to give that to you as an aside. Okay, let's continue. So we're going to consider the function w defined to be, not the tangent again, we did tangent last video, to be the inverse sine of some variable z, which of course tells us that sine w is equal to z, and we're just going to plug in the complex form of the sine to get a quadratic equation, which we'll see. So we know that z is equal to sine of w, which is equal to 1 over 2i e to the i w minus e to the minus i w. For this video, you only need to know the sine values. So, like last video, we are going to simplify. So we're going to have e to the i omega minus 2iz uh, plus, let's see, I want to have everything equal to zero. So multiply by 2i and move this over there. Minus 2iz minus e to the minus iw is equal to zero. This is equal to zero. And we want to multiply by e to the i omega. Just making sure I did it right. We are now going to multiply by e to the i omega like last time. Oh, incidentally, we still have a friend from last time, courtesy of my wife. She's great at drawing caricatures. So if we multiply by e to the i omega, this time I'm going to keep it in this form. If I do this, I'm going to have e to the i omega squared. You'll see why I keep it squared in the moment. Minus 2iz e to the i omega minus 1, since 
the e to the plus i omega and e to the minus i omega become one. Now I kept it in this form instead of writing e to the two i w since we can use the quadratic formula. This time around we have a linear term. Last time we only had this term and this term so we could solve it. It was a linear equation which is why I wrote this. But now we're going to have a quadratic equation. It's more difficult to solve this one. I don't know how to solve it like that. If you do, you can leave a comment. Use the handy dandy quadratic formula. E to the i omega is now, okay, negative b, which is 2iz, yeah, 2iz, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 2iz squared minus 4, a is 1, c is negative 1, over 2a, which uh, a is just 1 here, so it becomes 1 half times this, which we can simplify as follows. This part simplifies to become iz, obviously. This part is a bit more tricky. Might need some more room here. This part's a bit more tricky to simplify. So we have i squared is negative 1. This negative sign becomes a 1 as well when you square it. So this thing is going to be negative. So let's look at this. We're going to have minus 4 times minus 1, which is plus 4. I have a square root of 4 minus, and now we can have a 4z squared, which we can obviously write as 2, 1 minus square root of you know, 4 times 1 minus z squared, which can become 2 times the square root of 1 minus z squared. And we see that when we hit this with the one half, it goes away, becoming nice, of course. So it's just iz plus or minus the square root of one minus z squared. And now for the final answer, we are going to take the logarithm of both sides, divide by i, and choose the positive root to have the principal branch. So our final result is w equal to inverse sine of z, if I can write properly, 1 over i log of i z plus the square root of 1 minus z squared. This is the answer that we seek. Did I get it right? 1 over i log i z plus square root of 1 minus z. Yep. This is right, but what does this tell us? This just looks like a funny formula. Well, as before, we're going to apply it to a few simple examples, show that it reduces to what we think it should, and then finally use it to solve for the inverse sine of two, like we wanted. All right, careful not to erase my friend here. All right, so the simplest value we can plug in here is z equals zero, of course. So let's go ahead and do that. This formula tells us that the inverse sine of zero, one over i natural log of i times zero plus the square root of one Yeah, uh, square root of 1 minus 0 should be 1. Yeah, it should be 1. Silly me. So this becomes um, 1 over i log 1, which of course is 0. I was trying to get the 1 to go away, but we actually wanted the 1 to stay there. <laughs> right. Okay, next simplest example we can plug in is z equals 1 inverse sine of 1 is 1 over i log of, let's see, we got an i plus the square root of 1 minus 1. Well, that one becomes 0, so that one actually does go away. And we can write 
log of i as log of e to the i pi over 2 like last time. So it's 1 over i, i pi over 2, which is pi over 2. Uh, this is good because sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1. That's why we want it to be pi over 2, of course. And now we're finally equipped to calculate the value that we wanted in the first place. We can now calculate our hopefully complex value, inverse sine of 2, to be 1 over i natural log of 2i plus the square root. Square root of 1 minus 2 squared, which is 4, which is the square root of minus 3, which is simply i square root of 3. Make sure not to make the same mistake I did and write it as 3i. It's really not 3i plus i squared of 3. And we can now write this 1 over i log of, well, we have 2 plus a square root of 3i. You can see where we're going now. We can just write i in polar form like we've been doing the past several examples. 1 over i log 2 plus the square root of 3 e to the i pi over 2. And using properties of logarithms, we can distribute the log through to them both. So we have log of product equals the sum of the product of the logs. We have log of 2 plus the square root of 3 plus i pi over 2, which we can now notice that these i's go away, giving us pi over 2. And we have minus i log 2 plus the square root of 3, which is not that nice, kind of messy. But this is the answer. Yep, this is the answer. This is a complex value, just like we hoped. For homework, if you wanted to make sure you understand this, you can feel free to plug this into the sine function. You can plug this for z into the sine function and see that you get two. It's a nice exercise. It's uh, more tedious than doing it this way, um, which is fairly true in mathematics. If you know the correct way to find the solution, it's typically easier than checking that it's a solution. You'll find this in differential equations especially. It's very difficult to check those things, but if you know the method to use, you can get the solution pretty easily. And if you want to use this to impress your friends, ask them what value of x solve sine x equals 2. Pull this one out of your bag of tricks, they'll be amazed. If you want to see more, please subscribe to my channel. See you next time.